many couples trying to start a family experience infertility challenges. And while male infertility accounts for one third of such cases, there is new research that shows contributing factors may be rising. A new study out of Oxford University has found evidence of microplastics in male reproductive systems. Joining us with more is Dr. Caitlin Dunn, a reproductive endocrinologist and infertility specialist. Dr. Dunn, thanks for being here. First of all, how do microplastics end up in males' reproductive systems and what do they do there? Well, it's a pleasure to be here. Um, this study was designed to look for microplastics in human and in dog testes. And what they did was use that data and compare it to previously published data on plastics in the bloodstream and in human placentas. And what the researchers found was that there were microplastics present in all of the tissues. And the most common microplastic they found was PE or polyethylene which is a very common uh, plastic. You might find it in uh, plastic bags, plastic water bottles, yogurt containers, that sort of thing. Now, for heterosexual couples, conversations about infertility often begin with the woman. Why is that? I'm glad you brought that up. I think too often we think of infertility as the woman's problem. And I think one of the contributing factors is that even if there are sperm problems, which as you pointed out, is the case in at least 30%, but up to 50% of couples, the woman becomes the patient. So then it would be up to the woman in the typical heteronormative circumstance to undergo insemination, IUI, or in vitro fertilization, even if the sperm is the only problem. Now, in, in, in such cases, is that how common is it that both partners get tested for fertility issues? Yeah, I think, um, it's interesting because most men probably don't know what their sperm count is. Uh, testing your sperm is not part of a routine health exam that your doctor would do every year. Usually what happens is if you're struggling with infertility, which is trying to get pregnant for over a year without success, then you would have a sperm analysis with your family doctor, as well as a whole um, slew of tests on the female side to try to figure out what's going on so that we can get to the right treatment. Do you think a sperm count test ought to be part of the normal routine for men? Uh, not necessarily. I mean, we don't want to over-medicalize things, but mm -hmm. I think what the study pointed out that, that you led with was that sperm health can be a marker for overall health. And what we're finding is that globally, sperm counts are declining. And it's important that we do more research to get to the bottom of that, because a lot of the things that are bad for sperm health are bad for our overall health. So this could be a marker of an overall public health issue that we need to keep in mind. And, and what sort of supports and resources are there for, for men, males experiencing infertility challenges? Well, the good news is, is that there are a lot of good treatments available. So the first thing that I would do is um, recommend that you see your family doctor or a reproductive specialist to talk about modifiable factors. There are lots of things we can do without treatments just to try to keep your overall health and your sperm health happy. And that might be something like uh, avoiding smoking, alcohol and drugs, avoiding steroids for bodybuilding, um, keeping a diet that's free of processed meats, red meats and sugary drinks exercising and as well as taking a look at those environmental exposures such as heavy metals or even microplastics. Now, if we can't modify the sperm uh, health naturally, then we might need to turn to treatments and that might be like IUI, intrauterine insemination or test tube babies, IVF. All right. Dr. Caitlin Dunn, reproductive endocrinologist and infertility specialist. We appreciate your time and your expertise. Thanks for joining us. Thank you, Dan.